Before we get into the correction on Model 1 by the building of a second model, Richard Hubbard pointed out to me that this build um, and the method identified in his book is particular to um, pirogues or fishing boats built in Trinidad and Tobago and not necessarily in the Caribbean. Certainly as you go up the islands, the Beckway boats are quite different and a number of the clinker built boats similar to this are two enders, double enders. Um, so this build really relates to traditional fishing boats in Trinidad and Tobago. I got some feedback that you wanted to see how I'd made the keel up. Um, I used the Sherline mill with a 3 mill end and that was followed up by a 31 64th half round from a Dremel router. To secure the um, keel to the building board I had a 440 hex head bolt. The stem was cut exactly as I did in the first video um, but the only difference is that this one is installed at 130 degrees which gave me the 25 foot length that I needed. I spent a lot more time fitting the garboard plank this time. When we're preparing the keel we know we have to cut the rabbit on the front of the keel and then as it goes along we give it a level um, surface so that when the board is or the plank is placed on it it fits flush. What is not shown in the book is that you need to also taper the plank itself and you need to taper it where the massive bend is. So I made sure that there was absolutely no air, no space between the garboard plank and the keel and the result of that was that it, it fit perfectly. Um, you may notice also that I've been using PVA glue instead of epoxy and that's because I spent a lot of time shaping off, off the um, model so that there was very little stress on the bend pieces and no need to use a more powerful glue. And you can see both the inside and the outside fit how perfectly they came out. Much better than the first one. And this brings us to the major change of how we install the second plank onto the garboard plank. And that is by creating um, a recess that allows um, plank 2 to fit almost flush. Um, to the stern of the boat. You will also see that I've been using some spreaders, really two, one at the center and one at the back, um, particularly with the garboard to keep it flat, flat and the same applied to the second piece and the result of this was when I stuck the stern on I got a much better fit and the, the model looks a lot more balanced. And of course we had um, sanded the bottom of the stern uh, to reflect the two and a half degrees and were very careful to make sure that the stern was square to the center line. The result of this was that the model sit, sat very comfortably on the building board with very little twist so there was no need to make any correction. I used the same principle that when I went up attach each plank to the next one to make sure that it fit properly and that there are no gaps so that again the clamps are really just holding it in place rather than forcing it in place. And here we have plank 4, the half plank that fits perfectly onto the stern and lines up with the um, installation of the last main plank, plank 5. Um, and really you can now see that there's a, a whole difference when you compare the, the two models, that model number two is much more in scale because it didn't turn out as wide as the first model. This now takes us back to the end of video one uh, where we are installing the gunnel on both boats and this is a two by three piece of timber and really puts a finish to the outer hull. Although you can't see it now, the perspective between Model 1 and Model 2 is just so much better on Model 2. Um, it's balanced, it's a reflection of what the real fishing boats look like, and it's a reflection of what's in the book.
Continuing by following the instructions in the book, the next thing we need to do is to locate the various ribs. But to do that, we need to establish where the seats are. Um, and so what I've done is I've drawn up, which I'll show in detail, uh, my analysis of the plan of the boat. And I've transferred that um, onto the model and I've established the location of the three seats and most importantly made up a paper template um, which fits in the bow of the boat and from that I made up a plywood piece which fits and used a protractor to locate exactly where it goes in the boat. Richard identifies two spacings uh, for the location of the ribs. One is where the seats are located, which is 11 and a half inches, and the second one is a spacing between the ribs, each of which is two inches um, in thickness, um, which leaves a space of 14 inches between each rib. And he makes reference to something called a T-hole pin, um, and uh, establishes the exact distance between the, where the seat is, in other words, where the row sits, and where the first pin is, and that location is, is fairly accurately given in the book. So the key really is to locate the first seat, and there's only one set of oars used in this particular boat. And once we locate the seat, then we'll know where that T-hole uh, pin was. And then we can, from there, guess where all the other um, seats were located. And then, of course, I've made the front deck cover. Um, and so we can now, in my view, start uh, installing the ribs. We're going to be doing lots of chisel work. So now is the ideal time to take out all the chisels and set them. And we're using this Veritas system. Not one of my favorite tasks, um, but I tend to sharpen all my chisels once I have to sharpen one. So out they all come and eventually it does get done and I've gotten quite good at it. And once they're all done, I rub them down with some WD-40 to keep them from rusting. As you can see from here, you're going to need quite wide um, ribs to start off to do the carving. We've cut a little slot, a recess, to accept the rib. And then we've marked it off. We had a paper template. And now we're going to cut these off first with a saw and then with the, with the chisels. Well, there's no question, the first one is the hardest. This has taken me nearly two hours to do. Um, but I finally got it. Of course, because this is a freeform boot, every rib is going to be different. Another day, another rib. Um, I can see these ribs are going to be very challenging for me. They are 34 ribs and um, I've just done one and I got it down to 17 minutes. I don't think you're going to get much better, somewhere between half an hour to I suppose 15 minutes if I really get lucky. Um, but that's 16 or 18 hours <laughs> making ribs. Um, so it's quite a challenge and I'll quickly go through the total of one of them uh, in high speed. One of the lessons that I learned when on building the Swan Practicum was to do everything in small little increments. 
um, whether it is using a chisel to open um, the base to accept the um, rib in this case or when we're trying to find the angle of the plank um, because as the plank goes up the side the angle changes um, it, it, the, I found the pen sander extremely useful in taking off very small pieces and I think without that uh, I would have been throwing, throwing away a lot more ribs Well, I hope that's not an omen of things to come, because that one took well over half an hour. Um, whereas the opposite side um, was uh, 18 minutes. So, um, it's a hit or miss. I hope I don't have too many more like that. So, two more um, to cut out. Um, we have the number fours done already. And then we'll fit the deck. Um, and at that stage I'm going to treat, um, put the my treatment in and also seal the inside because I'm not going to be able to get to it um, once I put the deck on. Well that's been quite a day's work. Um, it's taken really most of the day to get the eight frames in. Um, it's getting quicker and better, as most tasks do when you um, when you spend time doing them. You get a, a feel. Um, so I'm sure that I'm going to become a little more productive as time goes on, and um, and be able to beat that 17, 18 hour. <laughs> um, time frame that I set up to get the rest of them done. When you're doing scratch builds, it's in fact a journey of discovery. And in many cases, like this is a perfect example, whereas there are some dimensions that are given to you and instructions, a lot of it is left to your visual observations. And have to tell you, I made a major, a major error. And I only discovered the error when I was working on model two, and I sent it to Richard Hubbard to review. And he said that the deck had come too far back. He found it was too big. And I just immediately assumed it was a perception issue on his part because you can see the model, you sort of photograph of it. And then I went back and started to look at the book and suddenly realized that the first rib actually sat on top of um, plank one. It did not sit on the keel. And then something told me, count the number of planks. <laughs> and there are six planks, not five on each side. So I am afraid I made an error. And what it is, is there's yet another plank. Um, so you have plank one and two uh, flat on the bottom. Plank three is on the side and it's a full 12 inch plank. Then there's a plank four, which the dimension isn't given. It's not a full plank. It's not a half plank. It's probably eight inches. Then plank five is the half plank, and then plank six, which is the whiskey plank, um, is the full 12 inches. Not wanting to start a third model, which is totally possible, um, I decided what I'd do is grind off the gunnel um, of the plank number five, which was the whiskey plank. Um, put some put some isopropyl alcohol on it and I, I just ground it off and cleaned it up and I've added the sixth plank and there was an error on the stern because the boat was made to take an outboard engine so we remade the back anyway and I'll have to do the same thing on model number two and 
I will do the same on model number two. I'll grind this off the gunnel. I will add the sixth plank, move the first rib up to where it's supposed to be by adding another one and modify the stern um, similar to this one. And that's the process of scratch building. So I'm going to bring this video to an end and we'll see you when it's corrected on both these boats and um, we're back to the rib layout.